Check this shit out. I know, I know. It's the game you've all been clamoring for. Barbie! This is one of those games that's been in my collection forever, and like the Fisher Price and Sesame Street titles, I never could muster up the energy to try it. But then recently I made a video covering all the NES games where you play as a female lead, and when I finally played Barbie, I was actually kind of surprised. The premise is pretty simple, Barbie's tired and thinking about all the leisure activities she's got to do tomorrow, like catfishing, election tampering, and maybe a little light embezzling if she's got the time. I'm just kidding, obviously it's just shopping and hitting the beach. She falls asleep and then the in-game levels are these dream versions of all the tasks she needs to take care of. That's kind of clever, honestly. Your life bar is measured in Z's, and when you run out of them, Barbie wakes up, which is bad because, you know, she needs her beauty rest. The enemies are usually inanimate objects that correspond to the theme of each level, like this tennis racket, these french fries, and these plastic bags flowing majestically in the wind. Sometimes there's so much beauty in the world, I feel like I can't take it. So Barbie has two abilities. She can jump, which makes this bloing sound every time. That reminds me of Mylon's secret castle. And she can throw these crystals. At first you think they're a projectile weapon, but they actually work more like the jelly beans in A Boy and His Blob. There are different animals spread throughout the stages, and if you hit them with a crystal, they'll perform an action. So here the dog will grab the tennis ball, or the toucan will act as a platform. It's kind of a neat mechanic, and considering this is a Barbie game, it's way more intricate than I was expecting. You have three charms on your bracelet, shown here in the bottom left, and supposedly you can switch between them to make the animals do different things, but I can only ever get the diamond one to work. That is until the mermaid level when I tried a new charm on the dolphin and... Um... Uh... My wife pointed out that my daughter may one day watch all these videos, so I've been trying to keep things a little more age appropriate lately, but come on! Look at how she's latched onto that dolphin! Although the game is quite easy, there are some difficult sections, especially these obnoxious fountains or this cherry sundae boss fight, but that's mostly due to two factors. One, you only have one life with limited continues. Two, Barbie is a huge sprite and cannot duck, which in turn gives you very little room or ability to dodge enemies. This bothered me at first, but now I think it's intentional in that you're playing as Barbie the doll, not Barbie the human. So that's why her walking is so slow and stiff, and of course why she can't bend her knees. The third factor contributing to the difficulty is the platforming, which has one of those you're constantly falling through a ledge style of programming. The game is already so unpolished that this won't bother you at first as there's not usually an enemy or pitfall nearby, so you're never in any real danger if you miss a jump. However, there is one section where they decide to truly test your resolve. Here you need to guide Barbie along these music notes while dodging records dropped from above. Not too bad, right? But every time you fall, this floor here drags you back to the beginning of the stage and man, you will fall a lot. I cannot express how frustrating this is to continually work your way through this unfair mess, only to watch helplessly as you're dragged back to the beginning for 20 uninterrupted seconds. This level is the real deal right here. I wouldn't wish this on the prisoners in Guantanamo. It is both cruel and unusual punishment. The first few levels are at the mall, battling all the terrors usually found there like water fountains and ghost clothes. But after Barbie tosses a few coins in the fountain, a toucan appears with a new dress, and now Barbie's off to the beach. The action then switches to an underwater physics swimming section where Barbie is now a mermaid, but otherwise everything else is the same. After that, she travels back in time to one of those old-timey malt shops that seem idyllic until you remember that the only people who were served there looked like Ken and Barbie. After completing each of the three stages, Barbie is rewarded with a new accessory. The mall yields a dress, the underwater section creates a pearl tiara, and the soda shop gives her some new kicks that she pulls down from heaven after hopping on some floating records she threw into the air. That rules! Once Barbie has her full ensemble, it's time to hook up with her milk toast mannequin Ken and dance the night away. No, And that's Barbie on the NES. What a game! Like yes, it's as comically terrible in every way you'd imagine it could be, but I gotta give it some credit for adding in the charm bracelet mechanic, as well as the general don't wake Barbie up dreamland scenario. And at the very least, this is one of those great, oh man, check this out, weirdo joke games to show your friends. 
This video is dedicated to my amazing wife, Eddie, who is the only person I've ever known to get excited about the existence of a Barbie game for the NES. Happy Valentine's Day, baby. This could be us, but you play too much. To everyone else out there, I hope that today you experience an equal amount of love and affection as our plastic pals here, and if not, maybe just that you find as much enjoyment and excitement in everyday mundane activities as old Barbie does in her dreams. If you dig my channel and want to see more, I'm posting weekly bonus videos over at patreon.com slash words. Your support means a lot and goes a long way toward my goal of, hey, maybe living the dream and doing this YouTube thing as my full-time job. A man can dream. I'm also streaming a new game every Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube, so come hang out. Until next time, thanks for watching.